Yeah. Well, you know, it's, yeah, it has a little sex appeal to it. Why? What do you mean? Yeah, I'm playing my horn. That's right. What do you mean? Because, because sex sells. <laughs> Tell me something good, tell me something real good. Tell me in case I go to the Wendy Williams show, you know? Oh, uh, you do. <laughs> I
here in Venice Beach. I'm gonna put my glasses back on. But I'm gonna show you where I used to live. It's right in back of me. And you'll see it in the video coming up shortly, but it's basically here. It's the second window. And back in the day, I would stick my head out of the window, kind of like this right here. And then you know how you turn it? And then if you look, yeah, so that was kind of, so you, it'll make sense when you see the video, but you can see the ocean. So check it out, coming up real soon. This is Debrion, formerly known as Debrion. And now I'm BMD, not to be confused with Kimberly G. It's a and uh, the name is Brian Ivan Davis. Talk to you soon. Oh uh, yeah. Good old Venice. Venice, California. I used to live right across the street from Hotel Irwin. Now I'm in the Hotel Irwin. Back then, I had a surfboard. God has been good. Jesus Christ has been really good because now I have an enclosed surfboard. It's called the sailboat. Well, you know what? Thanks for tuning in on my yacht. I always try to say helpful things and be helpful to people. You know, remember to wear your mask. And um, today I want to talk to you about, you know, just general safety. Because you never know what can happen. And um, if the boat or whatever, you're out at sea and there's no water, um, as you know, you can't uh, drink seawater. You get Ricky, Rickabedius, or what, uh, Ricky's, or something, something not good. So what I learned from Bear Grylls was, uh, what you do is, um, you know, when your official water supply runs out, what you can do is you can um, use it as a funnel. And um, the point is, is you fill up this with seawater, and uh, you take this hose, and you. Uh, place it in your anus and hopefully gravity will um, and you watch it so that it goes down. If not, you probably want to take a deep breath and uh, push it down so that you can get hydrated. Um, I just wanted to let you know um, that this is important and why you should always keep a um, hose about this size with you at all times. Now. If you happen to be out in the desert, according to Whoopi Goldberg, you um, also need a hose about this same size. Uh, and if the weather's really hot, uh, like 100 degrees or more, um, what you do is you get in the sand in the desert and you bury yourself and uh, you take this hose and you stick it up out of the sand. And again, you breathe in and you get your air and you stay cool. And in the night, you just, you know, Come on up out of the sand and shake it off and go on and find some water. I'll repeat the process as necessary. Uh, the point you may want to do is clean your tube. I'm saying between uses. Now there's only one thing you might want to remember. You need to wash your tube. Like clean. You never know. The next time, when the next time is, you might need to reuse your tube. You want to pick your holes carefully. Okay. One is longer. You don't. You don't want to. You don't want to get one that's too thick, and then now you can't really fill it up, and the hose doesn't really have the proper funnel. You want to have one that is pliable and appropriate so you can have it be filled up with the water. But it's your choice. I mean, really, freedom of expression. And the uh, long story short, no pun intended, is a hose is better than no hose. When I was uh, working at MIT, 
uh, the DOD doing uh, countermeasure technology for radar and other other things, but basically countermeasures. And then uh, I, my mother died, and then. Even though MIT had offered me a full scholarship, I just really wasn't feeling it. So I went and took a job at Motorola where I worked making the first base station software and cell phone configuration. My tribute, or claim to fame if you will, and it is now a piece of the infrastructure, it's called the normalized handoff. The normalized handoff is the feature where cell phones first came out. Uh, if the signal got low or dropped, the call dropped. But um, in machine language, I wrote a little routine that would before the call dropped because you can monitor the voltage or signal availability. Uh, before that, check to see is there another cell phone tower. And then again, yet yeah, check to see if there's yet yeah, one more. And then triangulate, if you will, betwixt the two to provide uh, a non-dropped call. Now, triangulation uh, today has evolved into many different uses, but um, back in 1988, I uh, worked for Motorola, and this is what I did. And this is really about music situation, because like what happened was, as an electrical and computer engineer, uh, my final finals week, um, well, I had been studying ahead of the beat, and basically um, I did this thing called the Medicine Album. I need to see a picture of it now, you know. Uh, so the Medicine Album, the name of the group I was with is called The Dance. And so The Dance, um, we got included as uh, one of the best top ten bands in the Midwest at that time, back in the late 80s. Hi. You better take the time and learn to pray And when I listen, I hear them say You better find a better way You better take the time You better take the time and learn to pray And when I listen, I hear them say more than just a color paint It's more the things you think The way they manifest You know it's not a fuss Thigh or a breast It's just a miracle The kind of really from the time And the space with the rhyme And the space In a different place and time You know you say yeah Make it right From the firmament That's what it's been here Conscious ever since
life you live is more to react. It's a claim. Make it in the name of Jane. And then your man or woman, it doesn't matter. Man or woman, it doesn't we matter. Dance. We roll. We party till we all we yeah, we dance. By the beach, off the coast, by the beach. Shark sharks like bass, like sub, they come rub, bub and up. The heads on the bottom of the boat, no joke. It's a bump, a base, a harbor in a secret place. Sailing drone boat, no joke. Who gets elected is respected, protected from ever being disrespected. Is this the goal? This is the rock, this is the party. We dance, we roll, we party till we all we yeah, we dance. about to go where I'm about to go and uh, perform with my daughter. Um, her name is Aviva. Many of you may know me as Dee Brion. Pre-pandemic, there was a wardrobe malfunction and I've been instructed for this show to wear dance attire. That's why I've been asked to wear a one piece. So, when you come on down, don't worry about any wardrobe malfunctions this year. You gave Marilyn two VIP, and you gave everybody else none. You said nobody could be the master. Awesome show, Aviva. Cheers. Cheers. Great show. Great show. Good work, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. We just completed a concert, and my father did not move the audience this time, thankfully. So, far as I'm concerned, it was a big improvement. Don't move the success. So what was all the drama today with um, Brian Michael Davis? With Brian Michael Davis, he changed his name yeah. to Dee Brion. Or Dee Brion to Brian Michael Davis, he changed it. Like yeah. right in the middle of the I don't know. Right I think middle of the show. some drama happened or something uh, drama. I think he did it because he did. He pulled a Prince move. You know how Prince? Oh, you yeah. know he got really upset because his label wouldn't give him his uh, his uh, rights, his song, yeah. and they had his name. So he he just said. I'm going to make my name a symbol. Yeah. And he, you know, he changed his name and then he was able to take full control of that name. Right. So what do you guys think about the blood moon that just happened? Well, you think that's why he did it? I think that's why he did it. Really? How? Why? Why? I think because he knows that we're in the last days right now. <laughs> no, we're in the last days right now according to the Bible and it's biblical that the blood moon will happen in that timeline. And I really feel that I think he wants to be um, symbolic, maybe to um, what Jesus? Yeah, yeah, to, to God, Jesus, uh -huh. to convey Jesus oh. and God in his music. Okay. Or the symbolic side of it. I have to disagree with all of it. Okay, okay. You tell me. I honestly think that what happened today. His saxophone broke on stage, and he was devastated. He, it was his sax broke. His sax broke on stage, and he was absolutely devastated. And all of a sudden, he just snapped. It was like, but he kept on going. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I really, yeah. So I didn't know his, I didn't know his sax, sax broke. On stage. I didn't know. So either. you think that's why he made this huge change from? Yes. 
Debron to Brian Michael Davis. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. I still think it's because he's pulling Prince moves. I I have to agree with. You. Wait, are you, <laughs> do, do you agree with me? Or Maybe do I don't. No. Why are you okay? Do you think it's because the Prince, or do you think it's because the Blood Moon? I think I think it's because of. I think it's because of the blood moon and and he knows that we're in the last days right now wow okay because we're getting close to the rapture Ooh. which is biblical okay and as part of the the blood moon is a sign of that time in the last days okay it's a sign of the times cool. sign of the times and what does sign of the times mean prince <laughs> sign of the times <laughs> <laughs> Miracle 21, the story of the dire Nazib and the miracles of Mary Tamir Miran. It's from Ethiopia, from the late 17th century, the region of Johannes, in 1667 to 82. It's parchment, ink, tempera on wood, leather, and cotton. There are 106 pages in here. It says, a formal worship of the Virgin Mary has been integrated into Ethiopian Orthodox Christian practice since the 15th century. This manuscript contains 32 stories of miracles performed by the Virgin was intended to guide weekly devotion. The theme of conflict between Christians and Muslims was particularly relevant to 17th century Ethiopians who had survived a century of violent warfare between these competing factions. In this story, a Muslim falsely accuses Nazib, a Christian, of stealing a robe, thus sending Nazib to prison. On the right, St. George orders his release at Mary's request. Below, priests read Nazib's letter of pardon. <laughs> He says somebody's twerking outside. I don't know. Somebody's twerking. Call me Brio. I'm not a Brio. Hey Siri, can you call me Brio for me, please? Where? He's on the phone. Uh, Brio. Yeah, yeah. There's somebody twerking outside. It's no place to sit. 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 Is somebody is twerking outside? In the car. Is somebody twerking on the car? In the car. In the car. Somebody's gotta go check this out. On. On. The car. In 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 the car. Bien, mi inglés no está bien. Tu pito es español. En otra Tu pito es español. Ajá. Sí, así. Ajá. The bus. 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 It's just hot. I need some air. Can we just open the door? Let's come. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's open the door. No, no, I don't want to open it. I just want to get it. It's cracked. Or, or no, 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 we can't. Uh, no puede salir para afuera. What? No puede salir para afuera después de que nos aventó todo el crab leg, aquel de la thing en la camisa, y los boxeadores salen y se comen a la gente. What do you mean? 
it could be a sea lion, it could be a um, harbor dead master preparing the slips, it could be looms, it could be ducks, it could be seals, and the list goes on. But in terms of where did it really all start for me, right, Michael Davis, it started when I was a small child and um, my parents took me to the liquor store and it's a little embarrassing, but this is where I learned right and wrong. I saw some uh, candy in the store that I wanted, and I went and I took it. And um, I was about ready to eat it when my mom interjected uh, in a very effective way. Uh, so I went and put that candy back. Um, but then, Sammy Davis Jr. came, because back in the day then, the liquor stores were basically a point of distribution um, in the community. So Sammy came down uh, to that point of distribution. It was also for me, liquor as well as for music. So longer story short, next thing I know, my dad is introducing me to him, and he's holding me up in the air like this. You know, yeah, just like, Hey, little Davis. <laughs> like how I big Davis. And uh, that is kind of how that story ended. Now I can only imagine. Now here I am, six three four six six feet um, four or three inches tall. I could probably, if he was still alive, I could put a hey, little Davis. But anyway, that's kind of what started. Don't be blessed. <laughs> A lot of celebrities, um, Little Richard, my car overheated with Sunset Boulevard. He came down with a large water bottle and a handkerchief and a Bible. And I was sitting there, really didn't know what I was going to do. And he just came out. There's a hotel we used to stay in right on Sunset. He came down and he was like, lift your hood up. Let's get this car started. So I lifted my hood up. I'm thinking, this is Little Richard. And uh, he took his long silk handkerchief and you know, we opened up the radiator cap. And I had never really seen a water bottle quite this big, but it looked like some designer stuff. And he poured it into my radiator and uh, told me to start the car, and it did. It was amazing. Yeah, I heard that fog one, but it was amazing how the. Uh, Confidence, he said that to me. Like, what do you mean, go and start this car? I, it hasn't been stuck in it. But then he handed me a little orange Bible. It was like his special Bible. I don't know where it is now, but I'm, I do remember that. And, then I, and of course, he told me to start the car up and with authority. And I hesitantly, and I the car started, and I was able to get home. So I was, he was really, he had a like a, a God type of thing going on, a good energy thing. Um, there were a lot of other celebrities like Shuli, I got to meet Jody Wiley, who was kind to me. Um, uh, Morris Day, I understudied Morris Day. I was in a restaurant being a waiter. All of a sudden, um, what was his name? David B. Talbert. He came in and ordered. I finally, I had trouble remembering the menu, but he ordered it. And I remember he gave me a good tip. And then it was just like that was some kind of magical thing. He's like, um, I think I'd like for you to audition or come on up and be in this play. And the name of the play was Lord Have Mercy. So my role was to be more stage understudy. So I understudied him, uh, but he never got sick. <laughs> so it was like school, and even still is. I mean, he's really meticulous about everything. He's really, really, really super it's a good role model, actually. Um, so that was kind of that. Uh, then I uh, got hurt in an accident, and I couldn't go to rehearsal. But but Jerome came, and while they were in LA, he picked me up and, uh, and dropped me off. It was really nice people. Then I saw him again in, in Chicago. I went backstage. Just really awesome, really good people.
this really my documentary. So the point, I suppose, where did it get started really take off was with Pacey Park. That's, that was my first major album. It was called Do It. And the song Call Her is on there. And that was recorded at Pacey Park. And you can hear it. And, and it was really futuristic. Um, even though it was recorded in the late 80s, you can hear how today it's like right on the pulse. And that's something I would expect out of Prince's studio. Um, but, but from then, I became Grammy nominated eight times. And you know that you can find that on dbrion.com and all the details about the different songs. Uh, what? Well, what? Hey, hello, America. How are you? How are you doing? <laughs> I, I, 
How you doing? Well, I'm here tonight to see my son and to see how he's going to do in this movie and, um, and and support him. But on my own, what I'm doing is touring around, doing lectures, and I'm back singing and dancing and doing concerts. So I'll be coming to you real soon. And I'm in Chicago. I'm in Chicago. I have a school. Go to America Now. America Now? Yeah. All right. Hello, America Now. Love is Jerry Girl. Hey. Oh, are you going to bust that? That's right. right. Well, we're looking forward to seeing the flip. Right. Yeah, but right. Yes. Thank you yes, very so much. I love your show. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. And did you hear my business? I love it. Did you just, and I like it. It's, it's got, it brings a little color to it. It's nice. Yeah. It's, it's sweet, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, we're doing, I mean, we, we're, we're so happy for Will and, and Martin. I mean, no, man. No, I'm, I'm, no, I'm happy for him. I really am. I mean, this is this is something that he's always wanted. It's something that, you know, even before he started doing the show, it was something that he, that he dreamed of. And, and this is a great thing. It's a, it's a huge Hollywood premiere. It's a huge Hollywood event. It's a huge Hollywood movie. And uh, everything I've heard about it is to be incredible. And, uh, you know, hopefully it's huge. And, and we do 3 or 40. All right. That sounds yeah. Thank you so much. All right. I'll see you. Nice to All right. All right. Hello, hello. How you doing? You say hello to America now. Yes, I do it. All right. American Out Shop. We love the show. We love the show. Thanks a lot. All right, so you got some more things going on? I'm just hanging right now. I'm just, uh, you know, enjoying uh, the, the our success of the show. I'm, you know, and uh, yeah, well, we're going on six. It's our fifth year officially. Our fifth. You know, we're having a good time. You know. Some publicists from the record company that really kind of blew up now they're off in New York City. Um, but um, they gave me a choice do I want to donate my proceeds to, uh, or do I want to uh, get paid? For some reason, I said I want to donate to the Leukemia Society. And uh, so I really wasn't thinking anything of it. And I called home and told my oh, dad, oh, hey, I got interviewed on TV by NBC. Anyway, uh, and then I thought that was it. Then I, I went back to my fraternity, uh, Kappa 
Beta Kappa Professional Electrical Engineering Society. Um, so anyway, but we have women in there, so it's very interesting, um, very forward-thinking organization, even in the late 80s. And they were just like us. They were, it wasn't like that. But, um, but the point is, um, we, well, I, in my dorm room, all of a sudden the phone rings in the dorm room, and uh, they come and get me through the house because we have the event. Brian, there's a call for me for you from Paisley Park. Jonathan Acre is uh, on the phone. Something about he's an engineer for Paisley Park. So sure enough, I run down the stairs and I'm like, hello. I said, yeah, uh, Prince heard about what you're doing and he, he liked it. And, uh, you're invited up here to Paisley Park to record if you want. Now mind you, Paisley Park is brand new right there. Completely brand new spanking. So of course this happened um, right before finals week, right before my finals. But for some reason, after co-oping and going through all the pain of co-oping back and forth, IBM, MIT, Motorola, and, and other co-oping things, uh, General Electric, who else did I co op with? GE, IBM, and MIT, those were the three places I co op Then I graduated and worked at Motorola. All right, just trying to remember. I'm glad I'm doing this before I forget. Um, so meanwhile, long story short, I had finally learned how to study, so I studied really quick. And I went up to Paisley Park for, I think it was like the weekend. And, and the finals were, I believe, Monday or Tuesday. So let me start with the end point um, of this story, and then I'll fill in some of the gaps. So at the end, after I met Prince two or three times, we had three, three, three conversations, maybe more. Three days we spoke in a row while I was there. And uh, long story short, he's like, why don't you come and join my band? And I, I actually, and, and says, or really develop your talent as a producer and a performer. And I, t I chose the latter. Um, and he was a little disappointed, and he says, well, why don't you want to be in my band? I said, it's not that I wouldn't love to be in your band. It's that, you know, I worked hard. So many sacrifices were made just so I could go to college. And if I don't show up for these finals, um, uh, my dad would um, likely, uh, I don't even know how to say this. Um, I can't remember. It wouldn't be a good thing for me to do that. Because it, it, it just, but he got it. You know, it would be like disrespectful to self, even though he was one of the best artists and most helpful secret philanthropist um, that I personally met. Little Richard, also very, very, very helpful. Uh, but something jumped up out of the water over there. So if we, uh, some of the projects you're working on, if we want to get in contact with, uh, people want to see your website or whatever, is there a website? Yeah, they can go to actually, uh, my favorite website I have is called hopeisaverb.org, and uh, we uh, do the biggest pro-am celebrity volleyball tournament in the country with a bunch of celebrities and pro volleyball players and Team USA and raise money for good causes. And uh, check out... Uh, Greg Rocky's movie Kaboom. We just uh, just went to Cannes, won a couple of awards. You know, it's a good film. People want to see my work. Cool, yeah. cool, cool. Losing somebody that you love, and what what do you do? How do you, you get up in the morning and they're not there? But you are. You know what I mean? And it's just it's it's a really a lot of the time if you're working nine to five, you have to, you don't have time to dedicate to that really, really important process of everything that happens. Uh, and I think the film will sort of guide people through their own situations that are sort of like that if they've lost somebody that they didn't really get to 
not even worn in a way, but really just, just like, yeah. This sucks. This, this, this is not. Well, I hear you. I, 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 I don't I'm, I think that's really profound. Uh, thank you for sharing. And and so, uh, kind of, is there anything else that we should keep our eyes uh, open for that's coming up in the near future? I think if you imagine some things that they will happen. So I want you to think about what you want to see me do next and watch it happen. I think we're going to make some real magic happen. Okay, you know, I'm thinking stuff you th now. You're thinking, you, you know, you're thinking, are you thinking a sitcom? Do you see me in a sitcom? I do. Because that's what I see. Okay, sitcom. Here's what you can look forward to. Okay. And Anastasia Barnett was sitcom in 2013. 2013. 2013. Okay. Is, that, is that what year it's going to be? Yeah. I, I, I can't so. even say that. Isn't that song good? Say 2013. 2013. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. <laughs> well, all right. Well, you heard it here first on Hollywood Headliner TV. Thank you. Thank you. I'm still learning about the charity myself, but what little I do know, it is awesome. And I've seen. It's just, it's really it's global. It's a global solution. Well, I'll tell you what's amazing. For, for, as an English person arriving, I thought it was just me as an outsider, but I, so many Americans don't know this. But if you get out of prison with a drug conviction here in California, in most cases, you are banned for life from any federal system. So you'll never get food stamps, you'll never get welfare, you'll never be able to sleep in public housing, you'll never get an educational loan. How are you going to get back on your feet? How are you going to find a job? How are you to do anything? So Susan was stuck in that cycle forever, the way that Susan went to us. And she broke out of it, she got a house, she took people from the bus stop at Skid Row, she was sleeping on the kitchen floor while she had her first five people, and now after a few years, there's no federal aid, she's helped 600 women and families to be productive members of society instead of going back to jail and costing us all a fortune. Yeah, well, she's really smart. That's what I mean. Yeah, what she's little smart. I know about she's her. She's smart, and the laws are really stupid. <laughs> really stupid. It's, uh, I don't want people walking the streets unable to get to be invested in society, unable to get any kind of federal assistance forever. I'm meant to, you know, have, have a hope in hell for getting back on the feet. Well, you know. I feel blessed that you're bringing uh, a nice way to put it in an easy to understand oh, kind of way to everybody. I, I, I think it's, it's, it's really awesome. simple. It's yeah. so nuts. It sounds like it can't be that simple. But it is that simple. It's just nuts. <laughs> it is. Well, thank you very much. Oh, and this is Hollywood Headliner.tv. And we're here and making a difference and sharing with you the latest and greatest, hottest entertainment in Hollywood. What he said. <laughs> All right, you all, are you ready? We're going to have some fingers. <laughs> Do you know what kind of fingers those are, Sandra? Not the good type of chicken fingers. No. The little chicken fingers. They look like, they're, they're chicken paws, but like they also look like ancient Chinese feet when they used to wear like the... They used to mold their feet. They used to mold their feet. Yeah, when they used to like, yeah. Well, why don't you guys rest it up some fixings and put them in the air fryer over there? They actually have to, to leave the air fryer. Yeah, they have to leave the air fryer. I feel like if we were like the nasty looking halibut, we would definitely put them in the air fryer right now. Yeah. Like, those holidays are so big, they don't even sit in that little red air fryer over there. <laughs> this is the whole thing. So you put them in there. But you can put two or three big feet in there. Have you heard the latest? So, wow. there's this amazing performer, formerly known as D. Brion, now coming back as Bryant Michael Davis, which is what his name is. Bigger and better than ever before. Um, Eight-time Grammy nominee. He hired me as his trainer to come and help him get ready for his performances. And he's about to perform 10,000 fans plus very soon, coming back as his comeback tour. He's done an amazing job. He looks so good and he is just off the chain. Every day, it's a little bitty baby in his hands.
He's got the little bitty baby in his hands. He's got the little bitty baby in his hands. He's got the little bitty baby in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got a little bitty baby in his hands. I said, I said, I said, he's got a little bitty baby in his hands. About you, yeah, that's what is true, yeah, and what I'm talking about you, and the loving that is true, and when you do what you do, what you do, and then you reach out and think that's cool, and no best to cut, I need your food too, it is every day, he's got the whole wide world in his hands, he's got the whole wide world in his hands, he's got the whole wide world. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. It it is every day in his hands. I'm not cheap. I don't want to be down the conversation of the login and password online. You will be making a payment of nine eighty three dollars on the internet online today, correct? As long as I'm able to log in. Absolutely, you will be able to log. All right. I wasn't really expecting that. Now I put on all the time to call the online community. So this is for a, what is this? This is for a bad guy. I'm going to stay on home. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. I'm going to give you all the time to give you all the time to give you all the time. Do you have the bar that I'm going to give you right now? I do. Okay. Just a moment. One second. Why do you all see my car? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Yeah, that's what is true. Yeah.